thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, uh, today I will present about the nano cellulose, the next super versatile smart material. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I will I would like to introduce uh, UTM, my institute first, if I start uh, my lecture. So, UTM, we have a three uh, campus, UTM Johor Bahru, UTM Kuala Lumpur, and UTM uh, Pago. It is a UTM core business, seven faculty, UTM global ranking, academic and research global partnership, local industry uh, partners, the campus experience by students. Okay, this is a presentation outline uh, for uh, for today's presentation. First, I will start with the natural fiber, and then um, after that, I will go to uh, go with the nanocellulose, a primary characteristic of the nanocellulose type, properties of the nanocellulose, nanocellulose from agro waste, application of the nanocellulose, conclusions and reference. Okay, what is a natural fiber? So, natural fiber is a fiber which grow or develop and come from the natural resource like plants and animals. So for this um, presentation, I would like to focus on the natural fiber from plants, which we, ca we can call it a lignocellulosic and non-wood of a biofiber and a wood of a biofiber. Actually, we have two types of uh, lignocellulosic, uh, one from the non-wood and another one is from wood. So wood, we can see that uh, it can come from a soft and hard wood, such, uh, such as pine, teak, rubber wood, acacia, and so on. And then for non-wood, uh, it can come from a trunk, a stem, front, the straw, bus, leaf, seed, a fruit, grass, and reed. Right. So these are some of the natural resources in Malaysia, such as a sugar palm. We call it pocket now, and then flax, uh, hemp, uh, coconut, uh, cocoa pot husk, betel nut, sugarcane bagas, banana stem, pineapple, mostly uh, located in the south south uh, Malaysia, uh, oil palm. Malaysia is the second largest oil palm product production in the world. Roselle, mostly focused in uh, this plantation, more focused on the south part of Malaysia. All right, okay. Uh, so we have known that uh, several types of the natural fiber. So from the natural fiber, uh, especially the lignocellulose, we can gain a nanocellulose. So nanocellulose has a nanostructure of a one to 100 nanometer in diameter and 10 to hundreds of nanometer in length. Okay, the fiber structure uh, highlighting the origin of the nanocellulose from the cellulose plant. This one example uh, from the cellulose plant is a sugar palm tree in which I involve uh, the isolation of the nanocellulose uh, from sugar palm fiber. And then uh, cellulose fiber, and then we can extract the cell wall, the cellulose, using the uh, chemical treatment, delinification and moisturization te uh, technique. And then after that, uh, from uh, the micro, the micro size of the uh, natural fiber, we can extract a nano cellulose. Nano cellulose. Okay, this is uh, the image of the uh, nano cellulose, nano crystalline cellulose. Okay, this one is a nano cellulose. Okay, maybe uh, some problem. Okay, all right. Uh, so, um, for me, you can see that uh, this, this structure is uh, uh, the lignocellulose fiber, in which uh, natural fiber is consists, natural fiber from plant is consists of three main components, lignin, cellulose, and hemicellulose. Okay, after the pretreatment uh, by the chemical, enzymatic, enzymatical uh, biological, and physical, we will get a cellulose. So, for, from the cellulose, this one is a, the pretreatment, a chemical pretreatment. So, example, in the soda pulping, acid and alkali treatment. 
So what I've done is in 2017, I isolate the cellulose uh, from uh, sugar pump fiber. So uh, using a sodium chloride to remove the lignin and sodium hydroxide to remove uh, the hemicellulose. And after that, after I get the cellulose and uh, several treatment that can be done such as a chemical and mechanical treatment to get the cellulose nanofiber. So usually uh, for the because uh, cellulose, we can we can isolate the nanocellulose uh, using a chemical and mechanical. So mechanical treatment usually they use for to get the nanofibrillated cellulose, and chemical treatment usually they use to get uh, the nanocrystalline cellulose. So this example uh, of the treatment that can be used at acid hydrolysis and high pressurized homogenization. Atrosonification, microfluidization, grinding, and cry okay. crush, uh, crushing. Uh, right. I have my hands. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can you can refer to my uh, several paper that have been published. Uh, okay. This is a primary characteristic of the uh, nanocellulose type, the type of nanocellulose. So nanocellulose can be divided into three: it's a bacterial nano nanocellulose, uh, nanofibrillated cellulose, and nanocrystalline cellulose. So usually for the from the plants, uh, well you, we can get the nanofibrillated cellulose and nanocrystalline cellulose. However, for the bacterial nanocellulose, we we must get from them uh, the bacteria or the algae, right? So there's a difference between these uh, three types of uh, nanocellulose, uh, and the highest crystallinity is goes to the nanocrystalline cellulose, and the surface the highest surface area is also nanocrystalline uh, cellulose. However, it depends on what type of application that you want to use. So uh, this, you can imagine the nanofibrillated cellulose, what it looks like, and do the light, and then nanocrystalline cellulose. You can see that it is a rice light. And then this is a nanocrystalline cellulose from the sugar palm fiber. So we can see that um, the length, uh, the length of the, uh, Nano nanocrystalline cellulose is about 130 nanometer and the diameter is about 9 nanometer. It is a, from TMM, it is a AFM. So uh, the nanofibrillated cellulose, which I get from using the mechanical treatment, high pressurized homogenization, and the, the, length, the length is above 1 meter one uh, micrometer. However, the uh, the diameter of the nanofibrillated cellulose is about 5.5 nanometer. Right. Okay, this is a bacterial nanocellulose that has been isolated by our team, published in the Journal of Material Research and Technology. And then some properties of the nanocellulose, why it becomes so uh, very uh, interesting material is because it has a high surface area, it's up to 100 uh, meter cube per gram. It has a high uh, aspect ratio of 100, high crystallinity up to uh, 60, 90%. It's a low density, it's a biodegradability, can be used in a biomedical application, it's a renewable and availability because it's from the natural, natural source. High tensile strength, up to 7.5 gigapascal, high mechanical strength with a young modulus of 150 gigapascal. It's a biocompatibility. Uh, it's uh, compatible to be used uh, in a starch and other uh, polymers. It's high thermal stability up to 350 degrees Celsius. You have a high uh, abundance surface of the hydrolysis group in which uh, it can be used for chemical modification and it's the less toxic, uh, toxicity. But it is uh, uh, the property of nanocellulose that have been uh, interested by many researchers. And then uh, some of the work that have been done by us is a uh, uh, Gingen uh, nanocellulose, published in the Food Hardcore 2020. And then the Water Hyacinth nanocellulose, published in the Journal of Material Research and Technology with a diameter of 15 nanometer and a length of 147 nanometer. And then the Knaf nanocellulose, Knaf uh, nanocellulose also uh, with a 
kenaf uh, nano crystalline cellulose the unbleached in which uh, we still retain the uh, lignin the content of the lignin in the nano cellulose we want to see the uh, the difference between the nano cellulose with a lignin and without a lignin and then also we work on the sugar palm bagasse and nano cellulose Okay, this is a sugar palm nano cellulose that have been worked work on. So the process is uh, delignification and mercerization. And then this one, when I using the hydrolysis treatment, I got the nano crystalline cellulose uh, with the optimum uh, time, temp, with the optimum and temperature and time at the forty five minutes and uh, forty five degrees Celsius. And then for the nano free cellulose, I use a high pressure homogenizer in which the optimum uh, pressure is a 500 bar with the 15 passes. And then after that, uh, one of the uh, work that have been done is I combine, uh, reinforce this nano cellulose, sugar palm nano cellulose with the starch to get the uh, biodegradable sugar palm nano cellulose reinforced sugar palm. Uh, stash by using the solution casting method. All right, okay, this one uh, sugar palm fiber cellulose, uh, nano crystalline cellulose. So, these are some of the results that have been uh, gained from the uh, during my study uh, published in the carbohydrate polymer uh, 2018. So, uh, after we do a treatment uh, from the raw sugar palm fiber and we do a delignification and moisturization technique. We see that the crystallinity of the fiber is increasing from 55.8 to 76.0. This one until cellulose and the diameter also reduced. All right, we see the reduce the direction of the, uh, the, the size of the fiber. Okay, after that, uh, I'm using a, a sulfuric acid, the hydro acid hydrolysis treatment. Okay, you see the diameter. So the, the, this one is a diameter of the sugar palm fiber. And then um, B, C, and then you can see that uh, the reduction of the, the diameter from 212 micrometer to 9 nanometer. So the huge decrease in the size and increasing in the in the crystallinity of the fiber from 55 to 85.9. Okay, this one is the FTIR. And then the sugar palm nanocrystalline cellulose, the TGA. We can see that uh, the nanocrystalline cellulose uh, they have a temperature of 350 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, how about the nano fibrated cellulose? So for, 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 for the nano fibrated cellulose, uh, what I have been used, the technique is the high pressurized homogenization, in which uh, the result shows that the decrement of the diameter from the 212 to the 5.5. Compared to the nano crystalline, we have a 8.5. So however, for the nano fibrated uh, cellulose, they have a a low diameter compared to nanocrystalline cellulose. And however, for the crystallinity, uh, the crystallinity is much lower compared to the uh, sugar palm nanocrystalline cellulose. So the, the thermal, uh, the thermal, uh, the first uh, stage decomposition uh, is about the 350 degrees Celsius, which is almost the same with the nanocrystalline cellulose. So, so we go to the advanced application of the nanocellulose uh, biocomposite. And then uh, application of the reinforcement of the nanofiber uh, with a different polymer. So this one has been done by several researchers and that use uh, the cellulose and nanocellulose uh, for the application of the thermal, versible and tunable nanocellulose based hydrogen. And then they reinforce also with the plasticized uh, starch and to make a transparent film, a food packaging, plastic, air permeable, resistant uh, surface size paper. And also, uh, nanocellulose have been reinforced with a PVA 
uh, using resolution casting method uh, to to make a stretchable photonic device and uh, wound uh, diagnosis, biosensor scaffolding and conductive materials. And this nanocellulose also have been reinforced with the plasticized PLA using a twin screw extruder to make uh, food packaging also uh, uh, using the film blower. Okay, there are many works on the uh, nanocellulose actually. So nanocellulose also be reinforced with a PLA to make a bone tissue engineering. Uh, cellulose esteride with the lower uh, polymer uh, for the interface melting with the PC. Uh, ethylene, covenial acetate rubber for a transparent uh, rubbery material. So these are several, several um, applications that have been searched on the, on the internet. So nanocellulose based uh, hydrogen for the smart drug delivery. So this is one of the examples that have been found. That uh, you can see that uh, how uh, the nanocellulose uh, is made from the plant. It can be nanocrystalline or the nanofiber. And then for the bacterial nanocellulose, using the fermentation, uh, using a bacterial, nan we get the na bacterial nanocellulose or BNC. And then after that, the nanocellulose hydrogen uh, will combine, uh, will reinforce with the drug molecules and then called a drug loaded nanocellulose and it can be used to sustain drug delivery at the target site at the right uh, temperature and pH. Um, already right, there are several, uh, uh, several uh, research uh, that have been done uh, by several uh, researchers in which uh, the nanocellulose based hydrogen for the theopathic drug delivery, uh, area types, and drug release kinetics. So you can see the name uh, name of the chemical. So model compound, uh, this is one of the example, bovine serum albumin, and type of a carrier is hydrogen. The carrier is a bacterial nanocellulose. At the time of 80%, uh, it will relieve 80%. The drug is at the 48 uh, hour. At the room temperature, with a pH of a 7.4, uh, using a phosphate uh, buffered solution. This one is a uh, reason they've been done by Muller. So there's a, another compound, uh, model compound, so they obtain a uh, type carrier of the micellate and gel. Using, uh, the carrier is a bacterial nanocellulose and the poly, polyzema. 70% is uh, at the is a 160. 96 hour and 18.5 of the uh, polyzema at the pH of the 7.4, temperature of the 30, 32, point, 32 degrees Celsius PBS, uh, which is a phosphate buffer solution by that, the one, uh, done by Alcatip. So there are several uh, model compound, uh, berberic sulfate, uh, tetracycline, and hydrochloride, uh, ibuprofen, and riboflavin, uh, paracetamol. They've been used uh, as a model compound by the researcher. And then uh, this is uh, what of uh, their focus. Also this one, any of you want to um, want, this, uh, want to refer more, you can, I, I will send you this slide. Okay, besides that, uh, biomedical, uh, nanocellulose also used uh, is a bi biomedical application such as for the 3D, uh, 3D bioprinting, human chondrocyte with the nanocellulose. And then uh, this is uh, some application in the biomedical, such as a blood vessel, ear scaffold, bone uh, scaffold, ophthalmologic, and artificial skin and heart uh, valve. Okay, this is a biodegradable anti pollution mask for COVID uh, 19. Okay, 3D printed uh, face mask produced by the Karaga. Some of the examples that have been used. And then the Kaonic nanocellulose as a pro promising candidate for the filtration, used for the filtration of the COVID 19. Okay, this one we published in the Applied Science and Engineering Progress. Mm -hmm. So we have an experiment on uh, using a 
nanocellulose uh, for the face mask. Okay, beside, beside the, in the biomedical, uh, nanocellulose also has been used in uh, car manufacturing by the car manufacturer, uh, in which this one is 20% uh, of the wheat straw natural fiber reinforced polypropylene. Then this, this one is uh, um, the nanocellulose vehicle at the Tokyo Motor, uh, Motor Show. And then also the nanocellulose uh, paper. This one is a bacterial cellulose nano, nano, nano paper film. They also been uh, examined by our, our our team and published in the Journal of Material Research and Technology. You can further reading in uh, this research in this uh, article, All right? Bacterial cellulose nano nano paper film. Also a packaging, active packaging for ready to make product. And also this one. Uh, we, we reinforce the sugar palm nanocrystalline cellulose with the uh, sugar palm starch and uh, PLA for, uh, to get uh, nano uh, the packaging, the food packaging, biodegradable, fully, bio, fully biodegradable food packaging. And also this one also, research that have been, uh, been done by our team published in International Journal of the Polymer Science. So you can see that uh, actually the nanosolutes can be used uh, in many polymers. Reinforced with many polymers to strengthen the mechanical properties as well as the thermal. Okay, this one, the sugar palm starch, uh, reinforced with the uh, nanosolutes, sugar, uh, sugar palm nanosolutes with the silver nanoparticle for the anti antimicrobacteria Packaging. Okay, this one, um, it's a Green Science Alliance company have used a nanocellulose-based polymer composite to produce a recyclable and biodegradable resin which enjoy the high mechanical strength. So the nanocellulose also have been uh, commercialized in, in the market right now. So this one is an electronic uh, application for the flexible OLED. And then for the can be used for the stretchable uh, photonic device. And then as a binder and separated in a battery uh, battery application. Also, it's a portable portable solar cell based on the foldable lightweight transparent conductive cellulose nanofiber paper. So as a conclusion, uh, because this uh, more uh, to the review of the nanocellulose, the reinforcement of the nanocellulose with a polymer yield will produce the lightweight nanocomposite with a high mechanical and tailored properties for the specific application. And then this is some of the reference. And then some of the book that have been published, uh, it's a bio-based uh, packaging. Also they include the, uh, the use of the nanocellulose uh, for the food packaging, also in biocomposite in a biomedical application. And then this one, uh, we produce one book on the uh, sugar palm the use of the sugar palm fiber and then the biocomposite and the synthetic composite for the automotive application and then a mineral field a polymer composite uh, perspective properties and new materials also we cover on the selection uh, processing and application we also uh, publish book on the recycling of the plastic metal and their composite uh, so uh, in the aerospace advanced composite we focus more on the natural fiber, natural, natural fiber, and then safety and health in the composite industry, more focus on the natural fiber, and then the industrial application of the nanocellulose and its uh, composite. Uh, this one is a new book published in the Elsevier, and then we also cover the uh, rosette. Okay, so for the further in, uh, information or uh, collaboration, you can contact me at the Ahmad Ilyas at utm.my. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, listening to my lecture.